Hey guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is Friday, it's the 19th of June 2020 and I am so happy that you're joining me today to talk about some knitting and some yarn. So if you're watching for the very very first time then a huge welcome to you and if you are coming back thank you so much for being a regular viewer of this podcast. Before we get started, I have some stuff to talk about. Um, you probably have noticed that I took a three week break from podcasting and basically from all kinds of social media as well. And there are a couple of reasons behind that, but the main reason and one reason that I definitely do want to talk about again today is um, what has been going on in the world regarding systemic racism police brutality and all of that. It was obviously a huge thing in social media where everyone posted a Blackout Tuesday, Black Square and obviously I assume you know what has been going on all over the world because this is an issue that is not only limited to the United States but it happens here in Europe. Um, it probably happens everywhere and while I felt like a lot of people were making a lot of um, really, really good input and sharing information, there was also this kind of getting back to normal thing that happened very quickly. Like People went back to posting their knitting on Instagram and all of that. And that just didn't really sit right with me. So I will be very, very clear here that I am 100% in support of the Black Lives Matter movement. It is incredibly important and it has been for a long time and it still is. Just because the news are kind of dying down a little bit now doesn't mean that it's any less important. Um, this is an issue that has always been here. Maybe the only difference is that now like police brutality and things are actually being recorded. But that doesn't mean that it's a one-time sort of incident and we shouldn't be treating it as such. If your first instinct is to, you know, say, well, all lives matter or I don't see color, then that is actually quite problematic. So instead of posting anything like that in the comments, I would really ask you to try to educate yourself. Um, we all need to educate ourselves. I completely include myself with that. And there are just so many ways um, we, as crafters, as white people, me as a white woman, so many ways we can contribute to Black Lives Matter. So if, for example, for health reasons, you can't go to protests, there are other ways to support the movement. If you don't feel like you can donate money, which is definitely needed, either by donating money straight to certain um, funds or by supporting uh, black and BIPOC makers in the community of which there are a lot. You can share information, you can highlight um, makers of color, you can do a lot of things and again I think we all need to educate ourselves and there's really no excuse to say I don't know where to start because we can all use Google um, most of us, I am pretty sure, have a Netflix account on which there are many documentaries if you want to watch something. If you feel like you don't have the time to watch something, read or um, listen to audiobooks by black authors. Um, there are just so many ways to educate ourselves. There's amazing podcasts. I have shared some resources over on my Instagram in case you're interested. And I just want to make it perfectly 100% clear that no, we cannot just go back to our knitting as much as we would like. This is not something where you can say, well, I would like to keep politics out of my knitting because this is not about politics. This is about discrimination of certain groups of people and that is just not okay. And I think it is very good that it is something that is talked about now. And I just want to be very, very clear about that. Um, so yeah, here we are. Um, that is reason number one why I just kind of disappeared for a while because quite honestly, I just didn't feel like posting a pretty photo of my knitting and like pretending this isn't happening because 
are like black and BIPOC members of the community, they can't just pretend this isn't happening. So yeah, why can we? So I hope I have kind of brought my point across. I find it quite difficult to talk about these things, which is not supposed to be an excuse. Um, I just sometimes I feel like I am not the most eloquent person, but that is kind of the stance that I am very publicly taking here. And I ask you to please be respectful of that. I usually don't moderate comments, but if there are comments that make this less of an inclusive space than I want it to be, I will actually delete them and I hope you understand. So that is basically why I have decided to take a bit of a break. Some other things came up during that time as well. Um, so for example, I started maternity leave. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, um, and we also went away for a little bit and we are moving in three weeks. So I am, of course, quite busy with that. Uh, we are quite busy with that. And if any of you are worried about me moving while pregnant, please don't worry. We are being very, very safe. It's just more the mental load of organizing things, especially because we are not just moving once, we're kind of moving a couple of times. And so it's just been a lot going on. And I must say, I actually really enjoyed um, just taking a step back from podcasting for a while and now I'm really happy to be back because I have a ton of finished things. So while I didn't really feel like participating in the knitting community for a while, I have still been knitting and it has actually brought me a lot of joy and helped me de-stress and kind of figure out things. So yeah, I have I think seven finished objects today. So what I think I will do is I will just talk about finished objects and possibly some acquisitions today. And then I will record another episode sometime soon-ish, um, during which I will talk about my works in progress, because otherwise it will just all take too long. I also want to mention that I am recording on a new phone today. So the quality should be better, but as with anything that you try for the first time, there may be some hiccups. So if anything is different to what it usually is, that is why, and I hope you understand. So shall we talk about some finished objects? So what have I been making? My first finished object I am actually wearing right now. Um, this is the Cotton Sky Sweater, which is a relatively new pattern by Vera Valimaki. I think I had shown it to you before, but I was just like very far up on the yoke, on the raglan increases, and yes, I have finished it. So I'm not going to get up because getting up is quite difficult by now, but um, I have posted some photos on Instagram and Ravelry, and if I'm very, very organized, which may or may not happen, I will try to insert a photo in here as well. So this sweater um, is a top-down raglan sweater and I made some modifications. Um, all of my modifications I have been quite good at writing them down in my Ravelry project pages. So if you have any questions about anything that I talk about today, the first place that I would recommend you go is to those project pages. There's always a link right underneath each and every video that I post. And then you can just click on whatever image is the, uh, the project that you want more information about. And I have been getting better at keeping notes of modifications. So for this sweater, I wanted to make sure that I could still wear it even while quite pregnant. So I did modify it quite a bit. Um, it is already an A-line shape which is very unusual for me. I'm not sure if I ever knit anything in A-line shape, but it made sense. And I actually added some more increases down the body and it turned out really well. So I am very, very happy to report that it fits me quite well now. And I'm already well into my third trimester. So I think I'll be able to wear it pretty much until the end. Um, in terms of the sweater, it is a top-down textured sweater. 
that has the sleeves in reverse stockinette. But what I actually did is I knit the sleeves in stockinette because I just didn't want to do all that purling. And then later realized that this sweater is pretty much reversible because this texture section is completely reversible and there's a really nice sort of detail about these raglan increases. But again, you can kind of wear it both ways. So I made sure to weave in my ends very invisibly. And now I can just wear it one way or the other way. Um, so right now I'm kind of wearing it the wrong way around. And it works. So I'm really happy about that. I also made three quarter length sleeves, which is a good thing because I used up every last bit of yarn. So I had four skeins of DK white yarn by Das Mondschaft uh, in her Glados colorway and they are 115 gram skeins. So I thought I should be okay. And I didn't make this quite long. It's pretty much as long as the pattern recommends. If I weren't pregnant, I, I might have actually gone for a more cropped version, but cropped sweaters are starting to look a bit funky on me. So I decided to use the yarn for the body length and just make shorter sleeves. And originally I thought I had made them a bit too tight, which is entirely my own fault because I never follow patterns for the sleeves. I just always make my own decreases. But this being a superwash yarn, I washed and blocked it and now they're pretty much fine. So very happy with that. Um, so yeah, this is my sweater. It did take a little bit longer just because there's a lot of purling in this. Um, so you had to pay a tiny bit of attention while knitting, but I really like it. I mentioned a while ago that I got this yarn specifically to replace a favorite sweater of mine that was also sort of like big and textured because I felt that in the washing machine and I was just heartbroken over that. So this is my replacement sweater and it serves me really, really well. I am wearing it for the first time today um, and I kind of thought, well, maybe by the time I finish this, like I tend to run quite hot lately anyways. Um, and it is supposed to be summer, maybe I won't get any wear out of it, but for example today it is cold, it is rainy, and we've just been having crappy weather for a while. So I can actually wear this quite well, and I really, really enjoy it. So that is the first thing that I finished. I also finished two pairs of socks, so I'll show you the one that you've seen before first. These are my Curiosity and Opportunity socks, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. And they are cable socks. I've talked about them many times. I have kept the stitch marker in here. So I think this was when where I was when I last showed these to you. But I have finished the second sock. I have blocked them. But I didn't block them on a sock blocker. Because if you put them on a sock blocker, they look like this. And you can't really see the beautiful patterning anymore. So I just blocked them and laid them out flat. To kind of even out the cables. And... Yeah, they turned out really nicely. I'm really happy with them. Um, I will say by the second sock, I somehow managed to memorize the pattern, which made it a lot faster. Um, still, these took a while. There's a lot of cabling going on. There's quite a lot of stitches as well. And I think it'll be a while until I attempt another sort of complicated cabled sock. But I did really, really enjoy these. Um, I used 2.25 millimeter needles. I followed Hohi's stitch count, but I did actually decrease a little bit on the foot. So I just made the foot a little bit tighter because I think this yarn, while it, it's a really lovely yarn, it ten, I think I tend to somehow knit it on the looser side and I didn't want these socks to be too loose after investing all of this time in knitting them. And the yarn that I used is Regia Premium Silk, so it's their silk sock yarn. The colorway is called Salmon. It also has a number which I think I wrote down on Ravelry. And yeah, I quite like these. I thought I might give them away to my grandma, but I think they'll be too big for her. So they will just go into my sock drawer and like, this is a really special pair of socks. So I'm very happy about them. If I do knit this pattern again, as much as I liked this texture pattern on the back, it was a little bit, it wasn't complicated, it was super simple, but it did slow me down quite a bit. So if I 
do make these again I may just make them in stockinette with the cable but like I said I really enjoyed these I used 2.25 millimeter US size 1 needles and I am very happy to report that they are done and then the next pair of socks that I finished I hadn't even shown you as a work in progress but I did show you the yarn and a couple of you actually wrote to me saying you're, you're quite interested in how this yarn will knit up and that is the black yarn with neon speckles that I showed you. This is by Strickoholic Yarns who is a German indie dyer and I had explained last time I recorded how Kai has been asking for a pair of socks out of a yarn that is black with neon speckles and that is something that is very hard to find. Definitely very hard to dye as on indie dyer. I found it in the dye shop and so I have finished a pair of socks for Kai because he was very very excited about um, this yarn so I figured why not just cast them on and knit him a pair of socks. So these are plain vanilla socks. Again I didn't put them on sock blockers. Um, I just did a one by one rib and then a stockinette sock with a fish lips kiss heel and they're really fun. I'm not sure if you can tell the speckles, but yeah, they turned out so lovely. Somehow the second one did a bit of a weird pooling where I think I changed my tension. But all in all, I'm very, very happy with these. And these are in a merino and nylon base. I think it's called a super soft sock. And I really like the base as well. It's very squishy. It's, it just turned into such a nice fabric. And I actually took these with me when we visited my family about two weeks ago and I've never gotten so many compliments on something that I was knitting. Even my dad, who has never wanted hand knit socks, thought that these were really, really nice. So that is definitely saying something and I know that now that I've talked about them on the podcast, I think Kai will be quite excited to wear these as well. So again, I used my usual 2.25 millimeter needles. And I did 68 stitches because Kai has slightly bigger feet than I do. So that is it in terms of the socks that I have finished. Next up, I also finished one of my blankets, which I am very happy about because I have so many blankets on the go. And at least the baby blankets I kind of want to have done before a baby arrives. So the blanket that I managed to finish, it turned out quite small. I just decided I was done with it and not every blanket has to be a huge blanket. So this is the Garter Ripple Squish blanket, which is a design by Louise Tilbrook. And I think it's originally designed to be in stripes, but then she did a mild version where she, I think, held three strands of sock yarn together. And I decided to use her pattern to use up some old yarn that I had actually started um, to knit another blanket with um, but that is never going to happen and so the yarn that I used I had all these 25 gram balls of Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight which is a 100% non superwash Shetland yarn I really like it it is very very woolly it's one of my favorite yarns to knit um, color work sweaters out of and I just held two strands double and created this sort of like rainbow blanket and yeah it's very very simple i really enjoyed working on it because you don't really have to think about it too much it's a lot of garter stitch with some feather and fan and yeah i just wanted to have it off the needle so i finished it i didn't use up all of my yarn but i was kind of at the point where i was missing some of the colors and I didn't want to make it bigger but then kind of change my color scheme as I went so I just kind of left it as it is. I blocked it, I washed it first obviously and it is really nice and woolly. I really like it and like I said I'm just so happy to have this blanket done. So that is one project that I finished that had been on the needles for a while and like just looking at these rainbow colors makes me very very happy. And then I have a couple more finished objects which happened quite recently. I have been, you may know, um, I've been trying to work through my stash and just get some yarn out of stash. And the other day I was watching Amy, who is uh, Amy Florence and the dyer behind Stranded Dye Works and the Stranded Podcast. And she's doing some kind of 
um, Marling Nittelong, I'm not sure what it's called. But she had done some mild hats and I was like, that looks really fun. I want to do that too. So I just grabbed some leftover mini skeins and random bits and bobs that I had. And this is the first hat that I made. And um, this is actually um, the leftovers from my Cozy Corner shawl, which I finished quite recently. That was knit with mini skeins of Wollmeiser and I had some of them left over. So I just kind of held two strands together and then changed colors and I made this hat. And I made a knit hat. I made it in stockinette. But then I do really like sometimes how reverse stockinette looks, especially with marling. So I just turned it inside out, um, woven the ends on the stockinette side, and it is a reverse stockinette hat. I didn't use any pattern for this. I think I cast on 66 stitches, possibly. Um, please don't ask me about my hat recipes. I kind of make them up every single time I make a hat, and I can never remember what I did afterwards. So <laughs> hats are just something that I just improvise on. This is actually too small for my hat and for my head, so I think this will go to my niece for Christmas. So I just need to tuck this away and I think she will really like it. She is three now, she will be almost four by Christmas and I think it's a nice hat. It's not super bright and girly, but it's still fun and I think she would like it. Um, and then because I was kind of on a roll with the Marling hats, um, I actually did a second one. I did both of these in a day. So for this, I actually held three strands of yarn together. I held a strand of the K weight um, from Hedgehog Fibers, which I used to knit a hat before. I had I had some more of the Volmeiser Pure from that I also used for this hat, and I used a strand of the Regia Silk yarn that I just showed you the socks out of. And I held those three strands together and created another hat. This one is still a little bit small. It's a very sort of tight fitting beanie, but it does fit me. So I'm not sure, maybe it'll go into the gift pile, charity knitting pile, maybe I'll keep it. I do really like it. And the original hat that I knit out of this pink yarn, I knit with a drops mohair and that was super itchy on my head. So I didn't ever really wear the hat after like one very, very miserable trip to Norway where I only took that hat and I was just scratching my head the entire time and it was very uncomfortable. So this could just be a replacement hat for that. And yeah, just some yarn out of my stash. And then lastly, another thing that I knit and I love this so much is I knit another flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. So you may know the flax sweater because it is a very, very popular, I think, free pattern by Tin Can Knits. And Tin Can Knits are just amazing at creating patterns that come in a huge variety of sizes. So they start with newborn sizes and go up to men's very large sizes. And they have the flax and the flax light, which is, I think, the fingering version. This is the decay or possibly worsted weight version, I don't really know. I've played both of them plenty of times and at the very beginning of my pregnancy actually I knit our baby boy a fingering weight version out of a sock yarn and I decided to just knit another one out of some DK weight yarn. So the yarn that I use for this is Sandmas Garn Pear Gint. I bought quite a bit of that yarn in different colors again when I found out that I was pregnant because I wanted to do another blanket but I kind of went overboard with all the blankets that I thought I could knit and also while I bought a lot of yarn I didn't really buy enough for a blanket so I've just been using it up for different baby accessories and garments and I've knit quite, through quite a lot of it so I'm quite happy with that so for this I used three 50, 50 gram balls um, like I said, it's DK weight and I just kind of did this fun color blocked gradient sweater. I pretty much follow the pattern to a T. It's the zero to six month size. I'm trying to make things that are a little bit bigger because I feel like most of the things that I've made are quite small. And it turns out that we will probably be, or we might still be in a quite cold place, um, when winter rolls around. So. 
some warm sweaters will definitely be needed. So yeah, this is the Flax um, sweater and I think it is absolutely adorable. I just kind of changed colors when it felt right and it turned out pretty well, I think. When I didn't, I hadn't done the sleeves yet, I was worried that this looks kind of boring and maybe not the most exciting baby sweater, but now that it's, that it's done, I really like how simple and classic it is. And yeah, I think we should get some good use out of that. This yarn, I have mixed feelings about it. I remember the first time I felt it, I was kind of surprised because it's quite woolly. I don't want to say it's itchy, but it is woolly, considering it is a superwash yarn. And then when I came back to it, I kind of changed my mind about it, but I think it depends on the colors that you use. So especially this gray section, it is not super soft, which I totally don't mind. And it'll be fine for a baby knit as well, because it's not like I'm going to put this on him with it without anything underneath. Um, so if you're looking for like a woolly yarn, but you still want something super washed, this may be a good middle ground. I don't know, but I do quite like it. Like I said, I have a couple of colors left in my stash and they're just kind of fun colors to work through. It's relatively affordable. I think I bought it on a sale even. And yeah, so that is the last thing that I knit and I do really, really like it. I have some yarn left over, so maybe I'll do a matching hat. But then again, I know, for example, with myself, I am not very picky. I don't get itchy or anything with yarns on my body, but on my head, um, I can't wear all the yarns. So I'm not sure if it's the best yarn to knit a baby hat out of, but I will find some use for it. And for now, I'm just happy to have this sweater done. I'm thinking I want to knit some more flax sweaters, possibly even in the six to 12 month size, because lots of people keep sell saying that these are really handy and they're kind of like sock knitting. It's super easy. You don't have to think about it. And I will say that my personal preference for baby knits are the more sort of classical not super frilly cutesy things so i think this is kind of right right up my alley and yeah you can just throw this on a baby i assume um it doesn't really need to be combined with anything it's simple enough so i think i may make some more if i have enough time who knows so yeah that is what i've been knitting and by now you probably realize why I said I was going to do the works in progress another day because it's just a lot of knitting, but it has been, I think, over three weeks. So shall we talk about some yarn? So I just have two sort of acquisition things to talk about. And if you're wondering why I still have yarn coming in, um, why I'm supposed to be like moving and trying to work through my stash, I don't know. <laughs> But I think I have been quite good at both destashing a lot of things. I have also been destashing some tools. For example, I destashed my blending board and I sold my big spinning wheel last year. So I think all in all, my stash, while it is still very, very large and, and I'm quite worried about packing it, um, it is going down. But yarn does come in every now and then um, and it's really quite funny because I think a while ago I mentioned that I tried to knit something out of a 100% linen yarn and I just had to admit to myself that while I like the idea of knitting with linen and I like, like the way it feels, I like my swatches that I've washed, I just can't knit with it. Like It just makes my hands too sore. It must, must be to do with my uh, knitting style and Especially because I think you're quite vulnerable to carpal tunnel syndrome when pregnant. There's just no way I want to ruin my wrists and be unable to knit. So I gave that yarn away and uh, the recipient was my lovely friend Marion, who sometimes gets, uh, we trade a lot of yarn back and forth. And I was quite proud. So I met her the other day and gave her this whole bag of like linen yarn. And it's like another thing out of stash. And then she came back at me. She's like, well, I brought you some yarn as well. So we've been talking because she had knit a really cool summer top. Please don't ask me what it was. I don't remember, but it was really pretty. And she used a linen mix yarn, which that also looked lovely. And you know me, I keep thinking I love linen, but I can't knit with it. 
but I asked her if, if she's finished and she has some yarn left over, maybe she would give me just a little bit to try. And she ended up having a ton of yarn left over. I think she only used 200 grams to knit a quite oversized top and she had more than 200 grams left. So she just kind of gave me her leftovers so I can make another top out of, out of it. So this may be my last try with linen. I'm not giving up quite yet. But this is actually by Sandmes as well. Sandmes Garen in their tin liner. And this is a linen blend. So let's see. It's 53% cotton, 33% viscose and 14% linen produced in Norway. So this feels much nicer and I felt Marion's finished garment and she hadn't even blocked it and it just felt amazing. So I will try this and see if maybe my hands can take this because it just feels really lovely. So I kind of haven't told Kai yet that I'm bringing yarn back in the house, but I mean, sometimes yarn just kind of keeps flying into my doors and yeah, it's all for the like science and trying out these things. So that is something that while I was de-stashing, I also kind of re-stashed. Oh, well, I am very excited about that. <laughs> Thank you, Marion, for just giving me this yarn. Also, it's like four little balls of yarn. Like, it doesn't matter if you think about like, a huge move, which we're halfway done with. Um, this isn't going to make the difference, is it? And then the next purchase, I have no good explanation, except I saw the yarn. I found out that this yarn is going to get quite a bit more expensive in the future. And I wanted a rainbow, as you do. So this is kind of my celebratory maternity leave yarn that I bought for myself. And the yarn that I'm talking about, and I'm dropping it, is Tuku Wool. So Tuku Wool, if you don't know, is a Finnish yarn brand. I actually have some in stash and haven't tried it yet. But it's a really lovely yarn. I know already that I'm going to love knitting with it because it's like a non-super wash. It's a very, very woolly yarn. And this is their Tuku Wool fingering. So I think they have a sock yarn version that has nylon and this is just a 100% wool yarn, even though it doesn't say a whole lot on the tag. But it is 50, gram, uh, 50 grams are 195 meters non-superwash made in Finland. And apparently, the, I think the wool prices are just going up in Finland. Like the actual like uh, fleece that you have to buy to turn it into yarn. So they are adjusting their prices, which I 100% understand. But I still thought, well, why do I not just get some? And like I said, I just found like a rainbow. So that is what I did. Um, should I go through the colors? I probably can't pronounce them anyways. But I'll go through them very quickly. So this one is called Kayo, which is number 26. This one, which I love. This is Upo, number 23. This is probably my favorite. And like, just look at how these colors go together. Then I have, apparently this is an older scan because it has a different label, but it's called Polte, colorway number 21. This one is... doesn't have a name. Oh, it's called Seva. This one is called Sin. This one has the name Murai. Again, this is totally my color, right? And then I also went for a dark navy, which is called Tinny, and it's colorway 27. So I have a couple ideas for this. First up, I have quite a bit of undyed woolly yarn in my stash. So, I mean, like combining this with like a light gray would make an awesome, like big blanket or oversized cardigan. Or of course I could just make a rainbow garment without any neutrals, but I'm not sure how, how much I would really wear it. I haven't decided yet. Then again, I could make baby things. Or what I could do, I mean, this yarn again is perfect for color work. So like imagine like a pair of mittens out of these two or these two. Or, like They just go so nicely together. It's kind of a random palette that I picked, but I really like this palette. So this is something I don't really know what I'm doing with this yet. 
and I need to decide very soon what yarn I'm going to temporarily put into boxes and what yarn I'm going to be taking with me for about the next eight weeks. So like the roughly five weeks before giving birth and three weeks after giving birth until I will have access to my stash again. So either this will be packed away or I'm thinking maybe I will just cake all of these up and like this will be quite a good yarn to just have caked up and ready to go and then I can just cast on whatever strikes my fancy at that time. So yeah, I mean that is a general thing that I need to do. I need to work out what I'm doing with my stash. Like I said, we're moving a couple of times, which is making life very, very, very difficult. And I'm not putting my yarn into storage because I'm too worried that something will happen to it. So I kind of have a temporary placement for my stash and then I will be reunited with my stash. And then eventually it hopefully will go to the UK. So I need to figure out what I want to knit, which is going to be very difficult because you know me, um, when I go on a two week vacation, I take way too long to decide what yarn do I need to take with me. So now planning for like an eight week time frame. And yes, I know, like I will have a new one and probably I won't be knitting, but who knows? Like, what if I do want to be knitting? I need to plan all these things and I haven't really gotten a clue yet, but I will probably take my yarn winder with me and just take a bunch of skeins and I will work something out. This is something yet to be determined. And yes, um, I may have also packed my cleaning bag and spent most of my time debating what knitting to take into hospital. And again, I know that I guess 90% chance is that I will not knit a stitch. But what if I want my knitting? What if I do need it? And what do I want to knit on? I know I want to bring socks. Like that is done and decided, but I still haven't managed to pick yarn for that because apparently I'm just a crazy person. Oh, well, that was a long ramble on about yarn and moving and all of that. Um, so that kind of leads us very nicely into life in general and what's been happening, but I think I've already talked about most of it. And the reason why everything is so complicated is essentially because we were meant to move to the UK in April slash May and then coronavirus happened and our move didn't happen. And we had rented a house and I have no idea what's happening with that. Please don't ask me like any difficult questions because for most of them the answer is I just don't know right now. So I know that in about three weeks time, um, we will be moving back to my hometown in Germany. Um, thankfully, my family has a very big house, so we kind of worked out a temporary solution. And then we will probably go somewhere else from there. That's all I will say. Um, so we are packing up our apartment um, we have right, we are definitely moving away from munich like there is no stopping us on that front and we are putting some stuff into storage we are putting some stuff into a temporary place and i am of course taking a lot of stuff with me that we will need and we are halfway through sorting all of that out so right now we have a ton of excel spreadsheets um just planning out things and writing down tasks and we're selling a little bit of furniture and also luckily some of the furniture in this apartment belongs to our landlord so we don't need to worry about that really the only difficult thing is is my stash um because like books and stuff you can just put into storage and it's fine but i am quite particular about my stash uh, i'm sure you can relate so yeah, that's what's happening and while we are here, I'm just going to keep recording and then once I am at my parents' place, again, I feel like I'll probably still record something because I will have a bit of time on my maternity leave um, and then obviously once baby is here, I am making absolutely no promises. Um, who knows, maybe I'll be back super quickly, maybe I'll take a year off from podcasting. I really don't have any clue and I'm sorry about that, but I'm just not putting that pressure onto myself. But as per usual, you know me, um, I don't really ever disappear. 
So if you want to kind of stay updated with what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis, the best place to follow me is on Instagram where I'm the Happy Knitting Podcast. So that is usually where you'll find out anything also like regarding the podcast, if I'm taking a break, all of that will usually be posted there and I try to keep my Ravelry updated as well. So yeah, that was a lot of rambling and I have no idea if I covered the things that I wanted to cover. Right now, all I'm worried about is that hopefully this recording worked out with my new technology, but so far it seems to be going okay. So I will probably be back again next week. I will end this with a reminder to please be respectful and um, just you know, be respectful of comments and everything regarding what I said about Black Lives Matter and let's not forget about that. Let's not just like drown out the difficult bits of what are, what is going on in the world by like looking at pretty yarn and distracting ourselves. Um, let's all of us, and this is myself included, remember this conversation and keep this conversation going because it is a very, very important one. Besides that, I hope that all of you are, of course, staying healthy, staying safe, staying happy wherever you are. I think the COVID situation is quite diff different depending on where you are. So here in Germany, we're back to kind of normal. But I know that in other places of the world it is a whole different story. So again, I hope all of you and your loved ones are staying safe and healthy and you are doing well. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. And I will see you very, very soon. Bye.